Hello subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Waves from SlideNerd here. In this video, we are going to talk about how to create our SQLite schema for our database in Eclipse. In the last video, we talked about what is an SQLite schema and how to use or create one using the SQLite Open Helper class and its certain methods. Here, let's work things out and find out how things work. So here what I have in Eclipse is a main activity or Java which has nothing great inside it's just a super on create and a set content view to go here to our activity underscore main dot xml again nothing great with the layout just a plain old hello world message displayed over here but in addition to both these things what I have is a class message dot java this has a static method or a normal static method message that takes two arguments context and a string message and what it does is nothing great it just says toast dot make text uses that context create displays that message for a longer duration by saying toast.makeText.show so now let's talk about how to create our schema first thing I'm gonna do is go inside the package create a new class by saying new class over here I'll call it webs helper now this class is gonna contain all our database column names table names and stuff now the super class for this let's click browse over here and say SQLite open helper which is what we want to extend for this class I'm gonna click OK at this point click finish and as you guys notice this is our class webs helper that extends SQLite open helper with two methods already defined for us now that was pretty fast so at this point there is an error here let's try to solve this error I'm gonna say webs helper here and inside this what I'm supposed to do is actually call the super class constructor with some arguments I'm gonna say super over here and there is our four argument super class constructor the first argument requires a context object I'm gonna say context over here and we are gonna pull this context from our constructor from somewhere else and that takes care of the first argument we have control 1 import the context the second argument that we have is the name of the database I'm gonna sub simply put a string over here for now the third argument is a custom cursor that you wanna use inside your app if you want a custom cursor now since we are happy with the default cursor for now I'm gonna put a null over here and the fourth one is gonna be the version number of our database which is initially one in other words it's context there's a string the cursor factory and integer version so I'm gonna go here and create those fields by saying string database name which should be webs database in our case now I'm gonna just go ahead and say webs database I'm not gonna put a dot DB extension for this same way I'm gonna create a table name that's gonna be our webs table in this case I'm gonna go ahead and say webs table so that creates two things then again the version number integer I'm gonna again say int database version or something like that and I'm gonna give it a value of one which we have and let me just substitute these values I'm gonna say database name over here that passes one thing I'm gonna say database version over here that passes another thing at this point there's another error it says cannot refer to instance feed database name while explicitly invoking a constructor so what we gotta do is make that sure that this value is non changeable in other words it is uh, static and it is final and that takes care of something I wanna say private over here and the same way I'm gonna copy paste these three things everywhere so let's just make it everywhere over here now we will talk about why this problem arises in our Java videos when I talk about constructors and super class constructors in a lot more detail for now this is the basic structure we have so inside the on create method this on create is called for the first time when your database is about to be created otherwise it's not called so going here what I'm gonna do is simply say our statement that we want to create the database so this is the create table statement that I have which is gonna create our database now let me actually put a string over here I'm gonna say string query over here and simply put double quotes copy the statement as it is inside this and that takes care of creating our database notice the semicolon here at the end of our create statement this is an SQL semicolon while this is a Java semicolon and you gotta make sure that you have things perfectly in place so here we are gonna perform some changes as you guys notice there's the webs table written over here which is nothing but this string webs table that is table underscore name so let me remove this static part here just put a double quote a plus sign on both sides and say table name over here and that takes care of something and then you see the syntax the underscore ID is the first column it's gonna be an integer 
it will be a primary key which means it will represent every row uniquely inside our database table and then there's the auto increment which means it will increment every time a new row is added now I will be talking about SQL in some one of my upcoming SQL video series and there we'll discuss these attributes in a lot more detail and then there is the name which is our second column which is, has a where care data type which means variable number of characters up to 255 characters in length so I'm gonna go ahead and make these as two column with names over here I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna say string UID equals to this and that actually takes care of creating the first column I'm gonna go ahead make this private static final string UID and the same way I'm gonna copy paste this name over here and in fact make another string I'm doing this so that I can access these column names later for example I can go here remove this underscore ID put a double quote put two plus signs and say UID over here same way I can go here remove the name double quotes plus sign on both sides and say name over here and as you guys notice you can clearly see how we are creating a flexible query again I'm gonna put the query also a little more accessible from everywhere I'm gonna say string create over here cut this entire statement paste it at the top and I'm gonna make this private static final again so there is our create table statement which we have so at this point inside our on create we simply go here this DB object that you have here represents our database that will be created so I'm gonna say DB dot execute SQL and I'll simply say create table and that's all I need to do now if you guys remember the execute SQL may throw up an exception so I'm gonna select this entire statement right click on Eclipse and say surround with try catch block and that actually generates an SQL exception if something goes wrong with our database and here what I'm gonna do is simply print a message by using our message class I'm gonna say message which is our class that we defined and I'm gonna say message dot message the context and the message which will simply include our exception over here now this is not a good way to do things but then that why I find it pretty simple again we need to store this context object over here so I'm gonna go at the top make another field over here by saying private context context and simply pass the context from the constructor argument to this simple variable that we have over here and that takes care of everything now inside the on upgrade method which is our second method here what I'm supposed to do is anything I want to do as far as modifying the tables is concerned I could delete the entire old table or perhaps I could create or alter the existing table to add certain columns or something and I can copy the data from the old table to my table on upgrade now we will see exactly when this method is called so don't worry about it I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do a simple drop table over here that's the query I wanna do so if the table is existing just delete it that's all I'm saying and then of course we'll have to recreate it again with the new parameters so what I'm gonna do is first delete the old table by executing this query I'm gonna say DB or execute SQL and I'm gonna simply say drop table over here and the next thing I want to do is create the new table that we have inside on create so I'm gonna call the on create over here and say on create database and that takes care of things pretty much again let's wrap this up and see if we can surround this with a try catch I'm gonna say surround with try catch block and that takes care of any other errors that may arise while this step gets performed that takes care of pretty much our simple helper class so let, now let's actually try and figure out when these methods on create and on upgrade are called so I'm gonna go here and put a log statement inside this in fact I should put a message inside these and that would make things very imp so as you guys notice at this point inside my vivs helper constructor I have put a message that says constructor was called and then inside the on create the same way it says on create is called and on upgrade is called so now let's go to our main activity here what I'm gonna do is construct an object of webs helper by saying webs helper webs helper and then simply rename it by saying webs helper is new webs helper pass the context object that we require there in the constructor by saying this over here and at this point let's try to run this and see if something executes I'm gonna select this app here click run at the top I won't be using Jenny motion for this because I wanna go inside DDMS and show you exact structure of the database that we have so at this point the hello world is displayed and there was a very short flash of message that said constructor was called now let's take a look if you guys remember we had our message on create called and on upgrade called as well but these two did not get executed so what is going on 
well if you go back to our main activity here and now if I try to access our database that is when our database will be created if it does not exist so how do you access our database I'm gonna say webs helper dot get writable database now this will give our database in a writable form this is an object that's gonna give us an SQLite database object I'm gonna simply say SQLite database over here and what this object contains is nothing but a reference to our database we just created using the webs helper so inside this if I simply write this one statement let's see what happens I'm gonna select over here again click run observe the emulator output carefully so at this point our app is running there's a hello world here there's a constructor called at the bottom and then there's on create called can you guys clearly see that yep that means we did create our database if you go to the DDMS perspective right now go to slidenerd.webs and inside the slidenerd.webs database and there is our webs database that we just created and there's a journal file that is containing some metadata information relating to our database and this is inside data slash data slash slidenerd.webs slash databases folder which means things are working perfectly now if you guys notice the on upgrade method was not executed now let's try to play around a little bit and see when this on upgrade method is actually called what I'm gonna do is add another column over here and I'm gonna see if that works I wanna call this column as address over here and simply go here call it address again the same way I need to modify our query by saying UID integer name var care here I'm gonna go put our address field that we just created by saying address and then gonna make sure that that is also a var care with 255 elements inside this so at this point what I have done is modified our create statement now remember a database file has already been created and it is existent inside that database folder which I just showed you in the DDMS perspective right so I'm gonna go down and let's see since we modified our create statement let's see if something happens with the on upgrade because this is what people generally expect that you change the create and let's see if the database works so I'm gonna click run here there is our hello world constructor was called and that's it we don't see anything about the on upgrade being called so you guys are probably wondering okay I changed the structure inside the create table statement and there was database which was already existing so when does the on upgrade method gets executed very simple when you do change the structure of the database change the version number over here from 1 to 2 now let's see how this works I'm gonna click select this over here click run at the top and this time if you go to our emulator there's hello world being displayed so its constructor was called and then as you guys notice it says on upgrade was called and of course there is a nice sweet little exception over here which is probably because I wrote an incorrect query for the drop table statement that we had so since we had a sweet little exception I probably figured out it's an incorrect syntax that I have used over here just let me change this statement by cutting this and say drop table if exists and then our table name over here and that should pretty much work so remove the proper double quotes and that is pretty much it so at this point let me run this again I'm gonna select this click run at the top and let's see what happens if things work or not so there's our hello world the constructor was called and after this there is no sign because once we have performed the modification it is considered permanent so I'm gonna again remove this address here and let's try remodifying it once finally I'm gonna remove this entire statement just keep the last uh, name over here and change the database version number back to 3 because we are rechanging it back so given this statement let's see how this works I'm gonna select it over here click run at the top go down here let's observe the output so there's our hello world again the constructor is called the on upgrade method gets called and then as you guys notice on create is called because from within our on upgrade method we ourselves called on create to create the structure of the new database now what this entire video tells you is something very simple inside the on create write the straight statement you need for creating the table but if you modify that statement be sure to change the version number over here if you want the on upgrade method to be executed so this is all we need to discuss as far as the schema is concerned now we'll be talking about very complicated schemas in the upcoming videos in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below and subscribe to our channel we will catch you guys in the next video have a nice day thanks for watching